Welcome to worship to St. Philip Lutheran Church here in Dublin, California. Today the, the uh, uh, theme of the sermon is called a profound mystery. And it's going to sound like I'm going to be talking about marriage, which a little bit but more I'm going to talk about our relationship between us, the church, and Jesus Christ. Well, let us begin our worship by singing our opening hymn. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love! gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid. in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. And now the absolution. The almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We turn to God's word. First reading comes to us from Isaiah, the 29th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. And the vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed when men give it to one who can read, saying, Read this, 
He says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men, therefore, behold, I will again do wondrous things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. And you who hide from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, who sees us, who knows us, you turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay, that the thing made should say of its maker, he did not make me? Or the thing formed say of him who formed it, he has no understanding. Is it not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest? In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain flesh, or fresh joy in the Lord and the poor among mankind shall exalt in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading comes to us from Ephesians, the fifth chapter, beginning with the 22nd verse. Wives, submit to your husband as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish, in the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. Because we are members of his body, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading comes from St. Mark, the seventh chapter, beginning with the first verse. Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders? but eat with defiled hands. And he said to them, well, well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are from, is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother surely must die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. This is the gospel of the Lord. the be 
text of the sermon comes from the epistle reading from Ephesians chapter 5 verse 32 where it says this mystery is profound and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church this is our text as I read the epistle reading you may have thought of a wedding because of the text that uh, that is uh, read for the, the epistle reading so I was thinking, okay, let's, let's talk a little bit about marriage and maybe do so in a lighthearted way, although maybe this will get me in trouble. I'm going to tell some marriage jokes. Like, I always wanted to marry Mrs. Wright, but I didn't know her first name was always. Marriage is when a man and a woman become as one. The trouble starts when they try to decide which one. My doctor told me I needed a break to break a sweat once a day. So I told him I'd start lying to my wife. My wife says I never listen, or something like that. Man is incomplete until he is married, then he's really finished. Marriage is the allegiance of two people, one of whom never remembers birthdays, and the other who never forgets them. Marriage, marriages are made in heaven, then again, so are thunder, lightning, tornadoes, and hail. Well, just a little lighthearted there. Our epistle reading for today is often used at weddings. However, there have been many of weddings that I've done where in preparing it, I've asked the bride and the groom which uh, scripture readings they would like read. And because of, of this passage and how it begins, I've had several uh, um, brides say, oh, I don't want that passage. I, I don't like what it says. The problem is that this is a reaction because they really don't understand Paul and what he is saying in this passage. And they think they don't want to agree to a life of servitude to a master. So what they think, or that is what they think of what Paul is saying. Well, I'm not going to use my time this morning to try to convince future brides on uh, how this submission of, of Paul speaks not of a, a curse, but rather of a blessing. Perhaps part of the problem is we start at the wrong verse. We start at verse 22, wives submit to your own husbands instead of uh, starting at verse 21 where it says submit to one another out of reverence for Christ after all Peter uh, or Paul um, or, or after all I nor was Paul preaching a wedding sermon um, when he wrote this text instead I like Paul are looking at marriage in this passage as an example an example of the relationship between Christ and the church there's another another joke uh, if you ask me nothing about this marriage feels right maybe the problem is that that not all marriages are perfect 
Some, in fact, are downright terrible. With those as an example, it's no wonder that some brides refuse to say that they want to be yoked to, yoked to an abusive husband. Again, I'm not wanting to preach a, a, a marriage uh, sermon today. Instead, I start with the t as I start with the text that I chose for today, I like to emphasize verse 32. This is a profound, this mystery is profound, and I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. What is this mystery that's so profound? Well, in verse 31, it says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Well, putting those two verses together, we have, And the two shall become one flesh. I'm saying that refers to Christ and the church. The perfect marriage, at least in humanly possible to be perfect, is a marriage that using verse 21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. In this way, they become one flesh. What does our relationship of, with Christ look like when we are the, uh, the church? Well, being the bride, which the church has been referred to, it, we are to submit uh, to the Lord. Would any argue that they would not want to submit to Christ? Or feel that it is in so doing, they would be agreeing to a life of, of servitude? Those who think they can save themselves by keeping the law do think that way. Some think, I don't want to be a Christian because then I've got to, there are all these do's and don'ts that I have to do and I, it just, it would, it would uh, make me feel like, like a slave or, or someone that, that uh, um, has to do certain things and, and give up what they really want to do. The law enslaves all those who think they can be saved by it. Who would want to submit to that unless you're thinking that's the only way to save yourself? Well, the gospel, however, says that we are saved by grace, not by the law. Paul confirmed this earlier in the letter to Ephesians where he said, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works so that no one may boast. Submitting to Christ is not about agreeing to servitude. It is about trusting him as your savior. We see how Christ loves us in verse 25, where it says Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. The church at Rome, or to the church at Rome, Paul said, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Knowing this, knowing this love, how do we love Jesus, our bridegroom? Yes, we submit to him out of love, not out of wanting some reward or, or thinking that if we do so, he's going to love us. In a good marriage, submission to one another is all about learning what pleases one another and looking for ways, therefore, to please them. No one in a good marriage says, no, I, I won't please my spouse because it's not what I want to do. It is true that compromise is part of all human relationships. In the relationship between Christ and the church, the understanding that Christ wants for us is clear and for our benefit. Paul says that Christ wants to present us to the Father so that he, he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or, or, or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Because we are sinful, this would be impossible. 
Christ, however, made it possible by giving himself up for us upon the cross. All he asks of us is to love him and serve him in gratitude. Here it is helpful to go back to the verses just before our epistle reading for today, where it says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Is this about keeping the law to be saved or acting out of love toward a bridegroom who has saved us and loves us without condition? True love is always about unconditional love. Now the challenge is to take that unconditional love given by Christ and share it unconditionally with your spouse, with your children, with your neighbors, with your co-workers, with, and you fill in the blank. Christ calls us then to submit to one another out of love to Christ. Amen. Now the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lean not on your understanding. Trust the word of God. Find it on your head and in your heart. Bear with one another and remember to forgive. Trust the word of God. God our Father calls us to his kingdom full of light. Gentle shepherd, lead us through the night. Please reveal your plan for us and show us how to live. Love the Lord our God.
understanding, trust the word of God. Find it on your head and in your heart. Bear with one another and remember to forgive. Trust the word of God. God our Lord and called us to his kingdom full of light. Gentle shepherd, we We pray. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are known, grant us a true faith that we would honor you not only with our lips, but serve you faithfully with all our heart, mind, and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church, O Holy Spirit, source of faith and wisdom. As you once opened the lips of Christ's disciples to proclaim the mighty deeds of God, so open the hearts and lips of all who speak your saving word, here in this place and in every part of the world. Add daily to the church throughout the world those who are being saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the call process. Lord God, we pray that you will direct us in the days ahead as we now have met and called Pastor Dave Ficken. We call upon the Holy Spirit to direct the process and bring a full-time shepherd to St. Philip Lutheran Church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for marriages. Almighty God, preserve your estate of marriage. Grant that wives would submit to their husbands as to the Lord, and that husbands would love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and our leaders. Almighty God, hear our prayers for the nation and its leaders, for all civil servants, and for those whose work imperils them for the sake of their neighbor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who protect us, for all first responders, for medical personnel, police officers, firefighters, those in military and homeland defense. Grant them safety, wisdom, courage, and rest, and bless their families as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill and hurting. Almighty God, in his earthly ministry, your son healed the sick and comfort the hurting. Grant healing and peace to those taking treatments, to the ill or injured, to the lonely and the imprisoned, and to all of those in need of our prayers. We pray for members of the congregation, Bev Jotten, Ray Frederick, Gina Nassari, Ken Herman, Andrea Green, Ernie Louis, Tom C., Amy Chow, Ann Colbert, Harry uh, Turberville, Claudia Gerlach, Alan Petrick, Gordon Cromer, George Mate, Terry Stover, and Jan Kinzel. We pray for healing for friends and families of the congregation. To, we pray for Linda Marie Rosier, Brenda Garcia, Dennis Ackley, Reagan Gandani, Casey Buddy, George Pickett, Sandy Green, Ron Green, Sandra Boyd, Heather Tuzzi, Dan Foster, Omar Usman, Bruce Larian, Robert Palacio, Jordan San Pedro, Robert Osher, Antigon Dayton, Pat Tabajero, Karen Berry, Jason Cromer, Dean Hansen, Scott and Tracy Glass, Dwight Prater, Linda Simon, Cynthia Hudson, Cindy Gershwin, Judy Reed, Jonas Coe, Randy Carlson, Dwight, and Dave Tuttle. We pray that in meekness each hurting heart would obtain fresh joy in your Son and exalt him in you, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. These and all other prayers we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And we pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you his peace. Amen. We sing our closing song.
Jesus is coming soon. Now I ask that you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God and have a great week in the Lord.